Okay, today in the Creative Corner, we are here with Rodney Carr. So Rodney, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got started. Well, um, I, I am the founder and executive director of iCare Foundation. That's spelled uh, I-C-A-R-R-E Foundation. Um, it's a play on my last name. Um, started with I care, like um, I really do care. So um, I think um, that name came about in like five minutes when I thought of starting a nonprofit and wanting to serve and mentor to youth and um, young adults. Uh, but um, to, to, to rewind it back a little bit, um, first of all, we're, we're, this is our seventh year and we, we, we were started in 2014. Uh, but uh, my service to the youth had all had been going on since my son was five years old um, back in, what's this, he was born in 95, so around 2000. I, be, I became a, a baseball coach. I was that, that guy on the sideline that wanted to tell my son how to do everything, right? Mm -hmm. And um, somebody said, well, you think you know a lot, so stop coaching him and help us coach all of them. So I came out the stands that same, that same day, started helping out coaching. Next year, got my own team. Um, and for 10 years, I did that. Um, long story short, um, we had a group of kids that went to some private, some good private schools here in the um, local metro area in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and and uh, what happened is I started, I, I backed away. Once I backed away, I decided to, uh, I was like, they got them to high school, got them to these private schools. And um, well, what happened is they all started getting in different trouble, right? They started getting in uh, uh, whether it was drugs, alcohol, sex, gangs, arrest, including my son. And um, I found out that uh, they needed me more as, as, as a young teen than they did when they was a five, to 15 year old. They needed me more from 15 to 20 to 25. They needed me more. So um, what I saw that the one of the things that was um, centered on the issues that they had, it was drugs, right? Mm -hmm. so it was um, almost all of them was smoking marijuana, right? Uh, my wife is, a, is an addictions counselor. I love sports. So I decided to combine our two skill sets and, and um, start a prevention program. So we did a prevention program. We thought, well, I thought I was gonna be in schools all around the country in auditoriums, speaking to people about um, substance use prevention in our youth. Um, there's not a lot of money about prevention. You, uh, it's like the world or the way our system and medical system is set up. They wait for a person to destroy their life. And then it's like, oh, here's, here's millions of dollars for yes. helping you recover your life. Where's the preventive measures then? So I said, let's get ahead of the problem, ahead of the curve and do some things about that. So long story short, it, it just started, um, it cultivated into um, addressing the adults because we found that the youth is, 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 for the most part, is not the problem. Uh, for the most part, it's the parents, the parents. Uh, especially in, in poverty stricken areas um, like, uh, like the, some of the areas that we serve here in Baltimore City. And what we saw, they had a lot of the same um, common um, issues, uh, poverty, low education, substance abuse. Um, I think I said low education. Those are uh, no job or, or low paying job. Mm -hmm. um, all these things uh, kind of helps. And it, 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 it kind of helps to connect the dots of seeing all the common denominators when it comes to some of our ills and our wills in our inner cities, especially in African-Americans or black and brown areas, right? Um, so, so what we did is uh, we started working on housing, right? So we did some substance, um, substance use of uh, um, housing. Uh, we started addressing the family instead of just addressing the individual. Uh, and then eventually we found out, we found that uh, one of the biggest problems in our community is not even the substance abuse, it's the mental health, mm -hmm. right? So we started addressing the mental health, right? Uh, knowing that uh, the disease of addiction is mental, physical, and spiritual in nature, we started seeing like, okay, what about the mental part, right? What about the spiritual part? So in partnership with my pastor, Pastor Dante Duckett, um, we started a mental health organization called Collaborative Healing, 
And um, then we started addressing uh, the mental health in our communities. Um, we've been addressing the mental health in our community. As a result of that, we started mm -hmm. seeing um, uh, one of the most key things about that is uh, doing an assessment, right? So most people that come that are interested in our program, whether we're working in the schools, whether we're doing outreach in the community, that outreach may look like um, some COVID outreach, um, food, which is a big program that, um, that we have called Leading by Feeding, um, serving over 600 people uh, weekly throughout the uh, Baltimore and Anne Arundel County uh, metropolitan areas. Um, one of the, so one of the biggest things that we decided to do was um, address the uh, food because we knew from, uh, let's say, let's, let's just, when you do your, your research or you just read the Bible, it did a lot of interaction in food. Churches yeah. <laughs> love food, right? So yeah. food is a big thing. We saw it with COVID, right? Um, even though we started, we had been doing, um, most uh, um, churches have, pantries and things like that, but we wanted to take it on another level. We, we didn't want to just give Christmas baskets and turkey baskets. And we was like, okay, what's what's going to happen the next day? Like, Ex yeah, exactly. We just gave him a turkey and we just gave him um, a couple of canned goods for one dinner, maybe some leftovers. What's going to happen the next day, right? That was some of the common things that we saw with our youth as well. We saw that a lot of our youth were hungry. Right, they would come to school um, eating uh, things like uh, I'm sorry, turn the car. It was eating things like uh, <laughs> honey buns and uh, things high in sugar, right? Yeah. And um, and it's just like if I put uh, regular gas in my in my BMW, right? Uh, uh, or my old BMW. I had a BMW and I put regular gas in it one day, and I didn't drive the car too much, right? I always drove my minivan on my truck. And what happens is uh, about, it was about two weeks, 10 days, two weeks, I wanted to go start up, it wouldn't start. Mm -hmm. I put a regular gas in it by mistake. I saw bodies, all the food that we put in it, that, 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 that this, all these, all, all this bad food as far as processed food, greasy food, uh, food that we can't even explain that's not even food, right? <laughs> We're putting this in our bodies and we expect our bodies. To... So by the time we got to these schools, man, these kids was burned out, right? Uh, yeah. So um, as a result, um, the way you and I met, um, you saw one of our, our flyers for sex education, right? Um, I hate to use the word sex education, but that's at, in, at the end of the day, that's what it is. <clears throat> we just put a twist on it. We call it youth reproductive health, right? Because that's what we're really looking at. We're looking at hygiene. We're talking about um, our youth being able to identify their bodily parts um, and being able to know how those bodily parts work. Um, here in, the, in Maryland, they took in sex, they've taken sex education. I, I, I think it's in Maryland, but definitely in Baltimore City, they've taken sex education out, right? So it's taking community organizations like ourselves, kids are having sex at a younger age. Sex is everywhere being sold uh, through our music, through our videos, our Netflix, Amazon. It's just everywhere. Sex, 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 sex sells, right? And um, our kids know Real Housewives is, it's, you know, we, you just see it. It's flying it everywhere we go, right? Now you got... um. Everything with the, um, I, I get it wrong all the time, LBTQ or I, 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 I can't, I don't know. LGBT. LGBT. <laughs> yeah. You know? so, so now these things are prevalent, right? And it's like, we know our youth don't know a lot about it. But like I was, I was sharing on my social media today, like some of our kids, um, we got a 15 year olds that don't even know what STD stands for. What's the acronym, young man? And you say, they don't know, right? What does HIV mean? What does it do? How can you catch it, right? What? How do you get STDs? Um, what is a condom? How do you put a condom on, right? Um, for young ladies, you know, we got young ladies um, that are 11 and 12 years old that that, that are growing breasts and their parents, we got to tell the parent because the parent don't know because remember now we uh, we started this conversation about substance abuse, right? So um, back in the, I'm, I'm an 80s, I'm a 70s baby, but I'm an 80s kid, right? And in the 80s, that's when the crack epidemic hit. And then the crack epidemic, that 
epidemic hit, that started the fracturing of especially African-American families. Pops was going to jail three time loser. Mom was out here selling her body, tricking, prostituting, selling drugs. And who was watching that kid? Grandma. Grandma, 70 years old, she too old. She can't take care of him. Next thing you know, who gonna take care of Shorty? Exactly, exactly. We, it always. We are in the creative corner with Rodney Carr, who is the the founder of I Care Foundation um, in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and he's put together the Virtual Youth Reproductive Health Education Workshop uh, for ages 10 through 15. So can you just give the people a little bit of description of what they would get if they would attend this Saturday workshop? So this, this, this every Saturday, all throughout the year, every once in a while we have to take the time off because I need time off. I need to take a vacation. Um, the kids got some things going on, but for the most part, or you know, we might have an event or something, but every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. we're doing groups. We say 10 to 15, we won't go lower than 10, but we will go higher than 15. We say that's the core age, you know, sometimes, but we, we get it. If you got a 16 year old, 17 year old that you think need to learn some things about their, their bodies. It's, so start, we do a much more than sex education, right? Um, we, we do things about, we talk about peer pressure, life skills, mental health, COVID health, how they're feeling about life. We, we don't just touch on, we touch on a little bit of everything, but at the core, we make sure that we get, we dot all our I's and cross all our T's when it comes to youth productive, youth um, health and their reproductive organs. Um, we really need for our kids to be informed, right? Um, and we'd be surprised as parents and guardians what our kids don't know, right? And expectation. I don't remember somebody sitting me down and telling me and showing me about sex. Yeah. I don't even remember me doing it with my own son. I just remember him telling me at 13 years old that um, he had sex with the girl across the street. Right. So with doing, and a, I think, um, yeah. doing a workshop like this, you know, now that COVID has happened and now that you, cause I see that it's a virtual experience. What do you think the benefits of doing something like this virtual would be opposed to if you had did it live in person for only the Baltimore community? What type of? That, that's a, that's the a great thing um, because uh, until I met you, I wasn't really open to opening it up to the world. And that's crazy because, well, no, let me take that back. I am because I have an NGO in, in Africa. I didn't get a chance to talk about Tanzania and Africa. We're doing amazing things there. 20 acres of land. We're building a sports complex there. Uh, amazing. Um, African-Americans, if you don't know about Africa, you need to get on. It's the next frontier. Trust me. But um, I thank God for virtual because it allows us to reach more people, right? So um, even as the weather's breaking and um, a lot of the mandates are being reduced, um, we're going to continue the virtual. We'll do hybrid because um, I want to do some face-to-face -face with our youth and we want to continue this programming. Like I said, we've been doing it for the last uh, two, three years, um, but we just this year went to a uh, a virtual concept and started putting it in um, um, uh, and started doing all 100% virtual. But now, um, so I'm looking forward to some of you guys. I know, I know this is in, is, this is in, in the uh, Richmond, Virginia area. Um, I'm VA, my, my best friend, I'm a military, so I'm a veteran. So um, I love the v Virginia area. I got a lot of friends down in Richmond. Um, in, in North and coming um, DC metro area, mm -hmm. Stafford, Fredericksburg counties. Um, so I'm like, um, I'm open, we're open to the whole world coming on. Um, we have some, we've had some African students actually come on out, called uh, that, that Wi-Fi is a little spotty, but <laughs> yeah, you know. I think it's a great way to get, you know, people there who may not be able to come in person due to circumstance yes. or whatever. Yes. And they can just hop on their iPad and still be there with other people. Absolutely. So when and I saw that, I thought that. I thought that was great. Yeah, I thought that was great. Yes. I, I, we would love to have some people from around the country um, log in. And with the idea of saying, like, I am not one to not look. I'm a, Like I said, I'm a veteran. Just told you all that uh, we're doing a lot of work in Africa and Tanzania. Uh, I am not close to traveling. 
you want me to come down in Richmond? You got something for me? Let's talk. Let's chop it up. Let's dot some miles across some T's. I'll be there. I, um, I'm always open uh, for a drive or a flight to come and do some work, right? Anything for our community. Anything for our community. Well, Rodney, let the people know your website, how they can register for this course, register their kid for this course, and what you have coming up um, in the near future. Okay, so um, our website is uh, www.icare, that's I-C-A-R-R-E, found, that's F-O-U-N-D, F as in Frank, um, dot org. Um, you can also reach us on Facebook at iCare Foundation. Um, most of our information will be on, on, our, on our social media page, and uh, we have an IG page at iCare Found, that's I-C-A-R-R-E Found. Um, there's a flyer out on, on our iCare Foundation page. Um, it has the link on the, um, at the very bottom of the flyer that you can um, register. Uh, if you want, uh, you could de definitely inbox me or message me or DM me on any of those platforms, and I will send you the link directly. Uh, and my personal number, 443-985-3256. And I, I take all calls, even those spam calls. I take them. <laughs> well, folks, you heard it first right here on ESPN Richmond 106.1, where we take and ask creatives, how did you take your idea and turn it into a business? So, Rodney, I thank you again for joining me in the Creative Corner on Creative Hustle. Yeah. I appreciate you. Deuces. Thank you. Thanks Peace. a lot. One.